It's one of our favourite types of lamps. It's a failed lamp, but even better, it's a lamp that has blown the fuse in the process of failing. So it's failed in style, and I'm interested to see what the inside is like and if there's any obvious simple component that's failed. Now, if you're not recognising this, it's based on a, one of the earlier GU10 style lamps that has three one watt LEDs like that on this circuit board, but then three total internal reflection lenses sandwiched in by this outer metal plate. Common style. In this case, because I was using it as a, in a glitter lamp and I wanted sharper points of light, I just had the beer LEDs and glued this in with a silicone adhesive into the back of it. So let's pop this out and uh, see if we can work out what went wrong here. Is this going to fit in here? It is. So there's three screws go from the front into the back of this. Incidentally, this was modified with... Uh, it was originally a yellow light and I replaced one of the LEDs with a red chip. So it was a nice orange colour. It made the glitter lamp sparkle that it was in. It made it spark with sort of red and yellow points of light. Oh, there is sooty skid mark. There is a sooty skid mark in here. This is good. We do like to see carnage. So let's zoom down as I unleash the carnage. So let's get in here and try and rip this heat shrink off. Actually, I'll just cut these wires because uh, I would say this is beyond repair. Having said that, I've got plenty of these type of lights, but you could actually put a new power supply in, or if it's not really wrecked, you could just replace the component that's popped. If it is something simple, often if the capacitor fails, it will take out the bridge rectifier. Oh, big skid mark. It has gone with a bang. The capacitor is bulging, which is a clue here. Oh, and there's a skid mark around the end of the capacitor. It looks like the capacitor has failed. Has it knocked out the bridge rectifier too? So let's get the capacitor off. It's possibly obliterated tracks in the back as well. It does look a bit, you know, it does look a bit copper plated in the back. This is where it'd be useful if they had the little fusible resistor. Right, tell you what, let's uh, probe the bridge rectifier and see if it has died in a short circuit manner. So uh, I'll bring the meter in. Well, I don't need to bring the meter in. You'll be able to hear it peeping. So let's go across the two input connections. Well, it's not dead short circuit and input. Oh, that is. It's short circuit. Uh, the rectifier has failed. One of the diodes has failed in it. So to fix this would require, if it's not the... Is the chip failed? Um, to fix this would require a change of capacitor and the rectifier at least. Uh, what else can we see? If the chip is failed, it usually takes out the current sent resistor, the little 3.3 ohm current sent resistor there. It looks intact. So I think the capacitor has uh, given up the ghost and gone. I mean, it is bulging, uh, which is unusual because the... Although it's a high voltage, 400 volts, and in the UK it goes up to about 350-ish volts, uh, this capacitor isn't it dealing with the super high frequencies that the other capacitor and the output usually is, in this case a little ceramic capacitor. So they usually don't suffer damage, but in this case uh, it has. It's, it's popped. Uh, is this dead short circuit? It may have blown itself clear. It's certainly not showing capacitive types sort of uh, things. Tell you what, I'm going to open this up. One moment, please. Okay, well, I've used my side cutters like a little tin opener, opened it up, and inside there is a bit of carnage. It's very dry. There are holes in the foils where it's flashed over. It has actually broken through the film. Um, here's the big skid mark there where it's punched through between the two layers of foil. Um, these capacitors, they don't have an awful lot of foil. There's the, the other hole where it's gone kaboom. Um, these capacitors don't have much inside them for their high capacitance because of the way electrolytics work. They rely on a wet electrolyte coupling very closely onto a textured aluminium surface that is like a, a mountain terrain that just gives a very large area. And... Uh, they also form an ultra-thin insulating layer on that uh, 
aluminium by depositing a sort of electrolytic, well, uh, electrochemically deposited layer from the electrolyte, I guess, an oxide layer. This is why they're very polarity sensitive. But in this case, it has kind of dried out and then it's flashed over. It's I don't know if it dried out first or, or whatever, but it has popped inside there and that's taken out the, the rectifier. That's a shame. But you know what? The, the light uh, lasted a good length of time. And it's easy enough just to open another one, take the power supply out. Technically speaking, the rest of the circuitry will be fine, but um, it would need the rectifier and the capacitor change to get it back up and working. And, well, cost-wise, that just might not be viable. I'd also have to make sure our track hasn't blown off the back. But uh, easily just replaced. But there we have it. The other thing you can do with these is, theoretically, because it's three LEDs in series, if you're off-grid, if you're on a 12-volt system, you could just use a resistor in one of these because uh, each of these LEDs, if you have a white one, would be around about 3 volts. So all you have to do is drop 3 to 5 volts across a resistor so you could make custom low-intensity lights. But there we have it. Uh, a failed capacitor. That's what finally took this power supply out after years of operation.